Hey everyone, it's Rugged Savior here today, bringing you a classic review of Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Now, this video is primarily just going to be focused on multiplayer, so I'm not going to really talk about campaign or. Wait, we have to talk about the campaign? Z Zombies 2? Uh. Well, with that being said, well, the campaign well, it wasn't that great. I mean, yeah, the storyline was bland. It had one good moment in it. The characters were pretty bland, minus Woods and Menendez. I mean, Menendez was actually quite a good villain, if you ask me. Now that I think about it, I was really hyped to see the future of events of Black Ops 2 to unfold via the secret documents you would uncover in the computer terminal in the first Black Ops. The documents pertained to a 1970s operation called Operation Cherub... Char... 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 Operation Cheerios regarding the elimination of Mason and other individuals. Now, I assumed that this would be the setting of the sequel. To make the main characters into renegades or fugitives, that would have been pretty cool, but... Oh well. But hey, we got the right horsies, right? Now, as for zombies, the mode continues the story... <laughs> with... Oh, I'm sorry. So, Black Ops 2 continues the storyline... <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, what story? I mean, nothing in Zombies makes a single ounce of sense. I mean, you had people going back in time just to fix something because the story was that convoluted. So with that out of the way, let's focus on multiplayer in terms of the positives, negatives, and other memories I had while playing this game. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm using the S12 throughout the gameplay, it's because the shotgun's a beast. To start off, Black Ops 2 was officially released on November 12th, 2012. I had attended, well, more like during the blistering cold of the midnight release at my local GameStop. My friend and I returned home, we popped the game in, and we started playing non-stop. I mean, I was that excited to play. I mean, after a midnight release, of course you wouldn't want to run home and get to the game immediately as soon as possible. So anyway, later on, judge me if you wish, but I had continued to remain part of the My Little Pony clan we made in back in Modern Warfare 3, and we teamed up and destroyed our opponents, primarily in Kill Confirmed. I would also recall getting salty player reactions in Search and Destroy and Gun Game and... Oh god, no, I now remember. Why did I use tactical insertions? I mean, I know they were useful in objective games, but today, I, I just can't see myself using them anymore. So let's take off the nostalgia goggles for a bit and go into detail regarding what Black Ops 2 did right. The first feature I enjoyed hasn't been done in a Call of Duty game and will remain a staple for years to come, and it's called Pick 10. And for those who are unaware, Pick 10 allows you to select your own armaments more freely. If you want to spend your points on just perks and no weapons? You got it. Do you want to get rid of all your perks and just go for weapon attachments? Yep. User freedom. Such an amazing thing. Part of this system also included making weapon attachments the primary beneficiary of the weapon itself. No longer are perks a means to enhancing reload speeds or reducing hip fire spread. In Black Ops 2, it's now laser sights and dual mags to perform this job, which I found to be pretty awesome. The next feature I liked, which is another revolutionary system, was the score streak system. I was fanatical about this because it was a chance for my objective pursuits to actually mean something. In other words, you gain a normal amount of points for kills, okay, whatever, but when you pursue objectives, the values obtained were dramatically increased, thus properly rewarding players who administered the highest effort towards victory. The next thing I liked about Black Ops 2 were the aesthetics. The game looked great from a graphics perspective, even on 360, it still looks good. The maps were colorful and vibrant. Vibrant, the weapon and equipment sounds were spot on, and Black Ops 2 had the best camo options, I think, in the entire series so far. I mean, you had camos like Carbon Fiber, Diamond, even the DLC weapon packs were amazing. Yeah, it's $2 for a camo, but who would not have Element 115 or, or even the Bacon camo on their weapons? I mean, it's freaking Bacon. Who doesn't like Bacon? Mmm, Bacon. You know what? I'm cooking some Bacon right now. I'll be back right back, guys. Bacon, Bacon, Bacon. So, with the positives out of the way, let's go into what I didn't like about Black Ops 2 multiplayer. For starters, the streaks, while unique in the way you earn them, were just a bit too powerful. I mean, if you set up a VSAT, dogs, and a swarm, there's no way out of that. You're pretty much the meat to the grinder at that point if you're on the enemy team. I just don't like overpowered streaks because it just takes away from the gun-on-gun -gun action that the shooter is supposed to be known for. In other words, less hand-holding. I want a shooter game, not a score streak simulator. Another issue involves C4, along with claymores and sometimes bouncing Bettys. But C4? I absolutely hated that equipment item. 
Typically, you would use C4 to booby trap objectives. That's, I mean, that's what I do. But in Black Ops 2 and even in Ghosts, you can airburst C4 in a heartbeat. And it was so powerful to the point of making other lethal equipment obsolete. Seriously, would you rather throw a grenade that gives you 2 to 4 seconds to escape its blast radius? Or an instant explodey C4 that's unavoidable? Now, thank gosh Black Ops 3 got rid of the airburst function, because if that didn't happen, C4 would still be out of control. Other smaller issues included the lack of unlimited sprint, which gave me severe cases of COD thumb. It's when your left thumb starts to hurt from the times you hit the sprint button. Quick scoping was annoying as hell. Mercenary and combat training playlists were a waste of time. Although multi-team was still a good idea, I think, and developers really should get on that for future installments. There was also some connection issues that would arise. Now, I know every single year everyone complains about lag and everything like that, but, you know, even regardless of your search preferences, you could set the preference to best connections and you would still get lag spikes. And the reason why I support Infinite Warfare having no theater mode is because every time a Call of Duty game does have it, it causes weird lag spikes every single time. I mean, we already have console DVRs and streaming functions anyway, so why are people even complaining? Lastly, there are toxic emblems. Now, it's annoying to see them, but when you have people like me reporting them, it, it kind of goes away after a little while. Granted, not permanently, but it helps people learn, and hopefully it spreads the message of, yeah, you know what? It's against the code of conduct. Don't make a penis emblem or something like that. I mean, come on. You say the game is rated M for mature, but... You're not acting mature by making that kind of emblem. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it just doesn't work that way. So in conclusion, Black Ops 2 was a very good multiplayer game. The game had its issues, but it was downright well-constructed and ahead of its time. So what do you guys think? Any interesting memories of Black Ops 2? What features did you like? What features did you not like so much? Feel free to leave a comment below. And with that being said, thank you for watching the video. It really means a lot to me. Take care, fellow viewers, and have a good day.